Welcome to our fifth and final episode from Chapter 2A. And on this one, we're going to cover what are acids and what are bases. And it all starts with a water molecule. Now, let's say you have a glass of water and you got a trillion molecules in there, but a few of them are going to fall apart. They just, for some reason, the water molecule just essentially breaks in half. All right? When a water molecule breaks in half, it's called dissociation. Now, when it breaks apart, it forms an ion. Now, remember, an ion has a charge on it. Now, the two ions that are going to be made by a water molecule when it dissociates is a hydrogen ion, which is drawn with the symbol of H+, and the hydroxide ion, which is drawn as OH negative. Now, the weird thing is, a hydrogen ion, because a hydrogen only has one proton and one electron, if it lost its electron, then it's simply a proton. And those have a hard time existing in nature. So it actually forms over here what is called the hydronium ion, which is an H3O. So that proton that was exposed when water fell apart, it bonds to one of those partial negatives sticking off. So in reality, when water dissociates, it produces the hydronium ion and the hydroxide ion. All right. So what do we need to know about these hydrogen ions and these hydroxide ions? Well, it has to do with acids and bases. And an acid is any substance that when you toss it in a solution, it increases the number of hydrogen ions. Because normally in a water molecule, the hydrogen ion concentration, now this comes from the world of chemistry. Brackets means concentration. So the concentration of the hydrogen ion is equal to the concentration of the hydroxide ion. Now remember, the hydroxide ion is actually the hydronium ion. Okay, so any substance that when you dissolve it in water increases this concentration at the expense of that, that's called an acid. Now an acid is anything that's less than seven on the pH scale, which we're gonna cover here a little bit later. Now very strong acids have a pH of one to a pH of three. And in fact, stomach acid has a pH of 1, so it's very, very acidic. Now, this over here, sulfuric acid, this is known as battery acid. This is the acid you're going to find inside a car battery. And it's extremely, extremely corrosive. So uh, typically when you when you see a place where they store battery acids and whatnot or in some uh, industrial situations, if you ever see this sign, dangerous sulfuric acid, be very, very careful with it because it's very dangerous. All right, so what is a base? A base is anything that when you toss it in a solution, it's going to increase the hydroxide ion concentration. All right, now these guys are greater than seven on the pH scale. They have another name called alkaline. You ever hear of an alkaline battery? It's gonna have this in it. Uh, batteries work by having acids or bases in them because remember, see that negative symbol there? And on the hydrogen ion, you had the plus symbol. It's an ion. Ions can conduct electricity. Okay. Strong bases, like sodium hydroxide over here, are going to have a pH from 11 to 14. Now, sodium hydroxide, uh, this is a chemical that you're going to find in a lot of drain and oven cleaners. In fact, it's the primary ingredient in Drano, which is a very, very strong um, uh, drain cleaner. It basically, typically a, a, a drain when it's clogged has got hair in it, and then this uh, base will help break down the, the protein molecules and it'll be able to be flushed out with the pipe. All right, buffers are really, really important with living things. Buffers are any substances that resist changes in pH. And these guys are very important in homeostasis. So if you remember from chapter one, homeostasis was the mechanism in which a uh, constant internal environment was made, all right? so. What happens is that these buffers, if you throw an acid in, it'll pull out the hydrogen ions. And if you, if you toss a, um, a base into it, it's going to toss out the hydrogen ion or hydroxide ions. And it's going to keep this pH in a 
very personal range that's very important for whatever chemistry you're trying to, to maintain through homeostasis. So they're often weak acids or weak bases, but in your body, proteins act as buffers because a protein has an acidic end and it has another end of the molecule that's slightly basic. And so by design that way, it can act as a buffer. So what is the pH scale? The pH scale is a measurement tool. It measures how strong you are as an acid or a base. But what it really covers, or what it really measures, is the concentration of hydrogen ion. In fact, the name pH stands for powers of hydrogen. It's actually a logarithmic scale. All right. So let's start right down here with a pH of 7. All right. That pH of 7 is neutral. And things are neutral when they're like this. The hydrogen ions, their concentration is equal to the concentration of the hydroxide ion. So when those two things happen, you're neutral, pH of 7. Now, when you have more of the hydroxide ions, then you're a base, and you're going to move down the scale. All right? If you have more hydroxide ions, you're going to move up the scale and you're going to be a base all right now this is a logarithmic scale so just because you're a ph of five and you compare it to a ph of 10 the 10 isn't five times more it, it works on exponents all right so let's say we've got a solution with a ph of three and then we have a solution with a ph of six okay so it's not twice as strong You've got to take 10 to the power of 3. Okay, So what happens in this is that obviously comes out to this, 1,000. So if you have a pH of 6 and a pH of 3, the pH of 3 is 1,000 times stronger than the pH of 6. Okay, So that's how it works. Make sure you remember how to do this math. Because I know in my classes you're going to know how to do this on a quiz, and I can guarantee it if you're watching on my YouTube channel that you are going to have the same or similar type of questions on yours. All right. I believe that covers it for this chapter. So uh, good luck on your quizzes and stay tuned for the Chapter 2B series of screencasts.